Hey, good morning. <coughs> I get this frog out of my throat. Good Monday morning, everybody. Um, and here we are. We got this great opportunity that God's blessed us with, with his word to get into it and get our day started off right and our week as well. Hey, this morning, I want to look at, um, a, at the account, something that was going on over in John, the second chapter, in the very beginning um, of that chapter. A lot of times people refer to this uh, to justify drinking alcohol because Jesus, um, uh, so to speak, turned water into wine. That's another topic for another day. But what I want, there's something else um, that I want us to maybe zero in or talk about, uh, give us something to think about this morning. And that's in the very first couple of verses within this uh, within this chapter. John chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 1, he says, On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. I want us to stop and think about what we just read in comparison to what we have um, today. And even there are so many that profess to be religious or Christians or, or whatnot that I think that really uh, overlook the significance of just what these two verses say. Number one is that Mary, the mother of Jesus, was uh, at a wedding. Number two, Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. Something that um, these preachers and pastors and the modern day uh, the re religious world has gotten away from the idea that there's an actual ceremony that's connected uh, to two people being joined together as husband and wife. What we have today, as long as two people make some, maybe some type of an agreement with one another, they start living together, this, this, this common law mentality, uh, so to speak, uh, well, you know, if we've lived together long, so so long and we've got kids together, then then we're married in the sight of God. My friend, the Bible just does not say that, nor does it approve um, or condone that. Friends, what we have in the in the world today is everybody does what we want to do, and we've been deceived to think that God's just going to accept us uh, and the lifestyles we live. Uh, based on our feelings and ourselves, regardless of what God's Word actually says. The, the wedding process, you go back and you study this in Bible times, and this wasn't a, a generational thing, this was the norm, is that it was a drawn-out process. Um, but nonetheless, there was a process. There was a legality, there was paperwork, so to say, that was involved. Someone will say, well, how do you know that? Well, we know that Moses wrote that if a man is to put away his uh, wife, then he's to give her a certificate of divorce. That means there's some paperwork that is involved. If there's paperwork of some sort at the end of it, then there's got to be some paperwork at the beginning of it, such as a marriage license, some, something of that effect that is on file that tells the state, so to speak, uh, the common law, that these two people are married together. Now, if it takes paperwork to separate it in the courthouse, house, it also takes paperwork to join it at the courthouse. But that's another set. But just a very basic point is what I want us to, to focus in on. And notice it, because the idea that we have today is that if we, live, if we love each other, if we're living together, if we've got kids together, we've still got different last names, well, then we're married. God's okay with that. Where's the Bible verse that teaches that? Someone will say, well, Paul said it's better to uh, marry than to burn. Well, it's not good for man to be alone. Yeah, the Bible says all those things. But where does it say, how does those passages teach that we are, that two people are married without the marriage process? The Hebrew writer spoke of, in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, uh, is that the marriage bed is undefiled. So one is either married or they're not married. So then it becomes who, who decides, who deciphers what constitutes a man and a woman being joined together. That would be God. Someone must say, well, put your finger on the Bible passage. Okay. 
John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, which is which we just read earlier, which implies that these two individuals went through the marriage process ceremony and Jesus's, Jesus, his disciples, and his mother's very presence gives us inference that that has taken place. Jesus would not have attended a wedding of common law and to celebrate people that have been living together in sin, unmarried, different last names, uh, for some period of time. Jesus would not have been there. He would not have celebrated such a, a scenario. So friends, we need, it, 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 this is just another issue and another problem amongst many in the religious world that that these, that these preachers and pastors have put forth that just God loves you regardless. Just go to church somewhere, acknowledge him, all right? Talk about him. And whatever else is going on in your life, he's just going to take care of it. He's just going to overlook it regardless of what his word says. Friends, just something to think about. Even in the Bible days, and like I said, this was not a generational thing. You can go back and you can research this. On yourself. There was always some type of a process, some type of a ceremony before people came together and had sex and began living under the same roof. That is just consistent throughout the Bible. But that's your dose of God's word. I'm going to leave you with that. Hey, I hope it'll get you wheels turned. I hope it'll get you thinking about these things. Because the Bible doesn't say things just to hear itself speak. It gives us wisdom and judgment and correction and guidance to those things that are true and right with God. Hey, hope you all have a great day. Lord willing, we'll get back tomorrow and we'll get us another dose of God's word. We'll see you then.